is going to be about uh, pandas, which is pretty much like a workhouse for like data analysis, data manipulation, somewhat similar. It's got some fake functions are similar to tidyverse. And some of it is just generic things where you're inputting data and, and manipulating it and cleaning data. Um, so I've got here, if you get the link, and I guess I can add uh, it in the chat too, just in case. I can know how to do that. There we go. Save a copy because there's some interactive stuff. We're kind of small, so we could probably work it as a group. Uh, so in general, I'm going to do very briefly importing and installing, reading and writing, a little bit about the dictionary, some similarities with Tidyverse. I've added some helpful links. Like there's this 10 minute tutorial if you want to like add it up yourself. And then there's this huge Python for our users PDF. That's like, if you have like a weekend, that, that will probably get you from R to Python uh, relatively well. Uh, so installing, you, mostly we in, instead of Crane, we have most of the packages on Python package index or PyPy. Uh, and in general, you just use pip unless you're doing it in Anaconda. Uh, for whatever reason, you don't have terminal, but normally it's pip. And you go to this PyPy website. I don't know if you can see this, but you can search for stuff. So say like pandas, and then you can look at it. It's got links to the home page. It's got links to the source material. So if you want to see what behind the the scripts behind it, uh, documentation, and then all kinds of stuff, and and it also tells you how to install uh, the general. So you just copy it pip install pandas, and then you've got it right there. Uh, this, this one caveat is that installs it for all users. So it's a global installation. If you do not have access or throw some type of flag, just put the user dash dash user in front or behind. It does exactly the same thing. And then you should be good, good to go. Golden. So when we're importing stuff, uh, instead of using library, we just say import and then the name uh, pandas. And what's really nice is we can import it as a alias. And almost everybody, you, you go search about how to use pandas, they do PD. And so if you're copying and stuff from other, other places, you're going to want to do import pandas as, you know, as and then PD. Uh, the dictionaries, which we didn't get to too much last time, I'm just going to be very brief. They're pretty much the same as a named list, as uh, uh, Louise mentioned. Uh, they just use the brackets. And if you want like a detailed information, you can just look at the, the main function, which is dic dictionary. So you can use the bracket or you can call it a dictionary. The cool thing is with Pandas. So if you want to make a data frame, which is the same thing as the R data frame, you can input a dictionary. And so then you have your column names is the first one and then what it's assigned here. It doesn't really matter what you put in the dictionary. Uh, you'll notice the index zero and one that's empty. If you just say what you want the index to be within the dictionary, that's within the function. So you've got the dictionary here, and then you've got the index, and then what you want the index to be, and you can do, you can put your index by hand. That's assuming you want to do it by hand. So the index, same thing as a row name. That that's just really quick for uh, dictionaries and and not really the full functionality. Um. Yeah. Can you repeat values in the index or it checks that they're unique? It can be repeated. Okay. It needs to be the same length, otherwise you're gonna get an error. So 
it has which is why no which is why if you have like a function that catches the gene names and you can put it in there i think i have a an example later on how we can make a data table with in naming things with indexes and stuff but yeah I have found that that get throws an error because I don't think R lets you have the same repeated or they make it a weird name or something. Okay. And then for manipulation, uh, I'm not gonna talk too much about NumPy. It, we're just gonna use it and you're just gonna pretend like you know about it. Uh, in general, I've never really seen anybody use NumPy by itself. It's always used with other packages. And it's pretty much where it's got all the math. So it can do things that base R has. So like randomization, choice, uh, log, arithmics, abs absolutes, and stuff like that. It also has um, array things. But that's for linear algebra mostly. Uh, and I, I wasn't going to touch that. So I'm just going to run that. And NumPy is almost always uh, changed to NP. Uh, that, pretty much the standard. So right here, I have a, a little bit of a code uh, that makes a simulated TPM data that we can play with. Uh, it just random, uses the random a generator from NumPy, uh, reshapes it so that it's a matrix. And then we get names. And this is an append thing, could be rerun as a list comprehension. List thing. And, and here is, control samples that we're calling control columns are named here you put the matrix data is data index index and then another four cases and then right now why we actually need the mps to do log to transformation so we can look at the head so just look at the first five and then go all the way down. You can slice similar as before, uh, or you just now have two instead of one. So I lock, that's gonna slice with the numbers starting at the first, going all the way down. You can use the names with the lock. The I lock is index lock. And then lock is like named lock. And this is just uh, making a phenotype so we can play around with some of these other functions. Do, do you typically work with um, genes as columns and samples as rows in Python? Uh, only when I want to merge it with the phenotypes because the phenotypes are normally the rows. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, it's simpler than that than having to transfer, transpose it. But yeah, normally when you load it in itself, I end up having to transpose the genes in the row, the genes in the sample. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You merge just like a, a regular merge function. Uh, the only difference is you do left on or left index and right instead of by x or by y. And then default of how is in it. And then our d types that we talked about before will tell you what everything is, is objects and floats. Uh, and then if you want to know the columns, you just do columns. Uh, you want to select just ages, and you can do that with just putting the variable and the dot, or you can put it in brackets and then call it an end. Quite simply. And then this is just some more about slicing. Well, this will slice by row if you don't put anything in here. And if you want column, you need to have uh, the semicolon in here. This does not work without the semicolon. Or if you want it as a matrix, you're saying type of thing. 
Uh, well, so one of them is going to take a column. So say you wanted to take this first column. Mm -hmm. Well, this is taking the first row. So this is also. Oh, OK, like comma column type of thing. It looks like this. This is the same thing. And if you want to look at the index, you can reset the index. And if you do in place, it saves. So now you have your regular index is some zero to 20, because that's how long it is. Otherwise, you have to save it to a variable. And then now you can see what we put the index in as a column. And then we can put it right back with set index. And again, I've done it in place. The default is is false. So and then you have regular conditions where you just uh, ask for the aid, the column of interest, and for this is 35. And then I wanted to count how many of these are true, and that's number 11. So you can do your conditional subset. So this is the same thing as if you were subsetting or filtering, and it's just a nested kind of thing here. And then you can lock and select only a handful of columns. These chains can get very intense, uh, depending on what you're doing. And here's if you want to do two things. So you're doing the and, logical thing or or where you're doing either or you need a square brackets there for the dot lock right like um yes okay. so if you didn't use the square brackets then it would do like the dot lock of the uh, new df sex equals female and then the new df age greater than 30 or high will like not know what to do there right uh, if you don't use the square brackets, it doesn't know what it is because it's you're saying you're doing a. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean those square brackets. So let me let me annotate on your. Okay. On your Zoom, so I'm at here and here. Those square brackets, you need them so that the dot lock will work, right? Ah uh, no. Uh. You need the square bracket here so that you actually subset the data frame. Oh, okay. The dot lock is like if you're doing one of those pipes. So I'm piping this into a selection. So I, I'm doing the first thing, which is like a compound filter. And then I'm selecting for only four rows because it was a big data frame. Um, Without the square bracket, uh, you aren't going to, you've got too many things going on. Like you've got one conditional argument, which is just a Boolean list. And then you've got your second conditional argument. which is again, a Boolean list. And so you're piping this into a new DF and we have to use the square brackets. You can also do lock. You just have to make sure you're doing it in the right order. And this probably makes a little bit more sense uh, because you're selecting columns based on the page and so it's the same thing are they like equally efficient type of thing or like is the second one that where you're doing the dot lock after just getting like these very large matrix then getting the dot lock of it then like subsetting 
this is like I did two separate dot locks for no apparent reason. Mm -hmm. um, like this is the exact same thing as this. The only difference is that I did a dot lock twice. So it's like a I did base you do like rows and then columns. Sorry. There's a bunch of other things you can do. Uh, because I this I don't have too many complicated things, it's actually harder to tell. So like you can do is is in. So like if you've got like four or five things or like a bunch of cities, you can just put a bunch of labels in there and it will check to see for each one it matches. And then you can make sure if you want to cancel out if there's NAs, so that's null or contains, starts with a bunch of these things, ends with, contains, a lot of the same things you would see in R, just sometimes it's written a little bit differently. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. And then there's the group by, which is the same thing in R except no underscore. And obviously you have to use the tidy verse for the, or deep by, I can't remember where it comes from, but this is innate. So you can group by sex, you can check the size. It's pretty much the count. You can subset here uh, and then group by and then do mean for median max pretty much any kind of function you can make your own function and then apply it here scribe uh there's the t for transposing but if you forget and i normally when i'm annotating code i actually just spell out transpose Same thing, uh, you can do multiple group buys. And then for reshaping, it's melt and if you have more, uh, melt and then pivot, I think I've got just melt here for you, but say we wanna melt it together and renaming the, the columns. You input a dictionary, which is why you pretty much have to have a dictionary for everything. Uh, you can rename and then reset the index in the same kind of uh, pipe. So we renamed it, but then we actually want these samples to be on the index. So we're just gonna put that in the end. And so this is just put all together. So now you've got the TPM all in one line. So the pivot longer. And then you've got your data frame that you can actually like plot with if you want to, like ggplot or something like that. And then aggregate does pretty much what you think. It's aggregating all the TPM, looking for the min and the max. Aggregate TPM because we selected for TPM. That was the first half. Uh, I figured that it's probably easier to just kind of do an exercise where you just do the same thing so that you know how to write it. Uh, I don't know if anybody wants to say how they would do this or if they want to like a five minute, a minute or two. Um, do you want me to use to create breakout rooms or? Yes. Yeah. Five minutes just to go through these. I don't think they're too intense, but it gets, it gets most of the stuff I just covered. So. Um, you want like three rooms maybe? Uh, how many people are here? Uh, probably we have nine. Seven. 
Yeah, three sounds good. Right. Some very innovative ways to answer the question. Um, I probably will show you my solutions, and then if you guys have like an alternative, you can show tell me about yours. The best solution. So if I, I want to check out the first ten. I would probably just do head. Uh, alternatively, I was thinking I would also do zero to about eleven. Zero to ten. Also does the same thing, uh, but normally I just do head. The first ten. Uh, tail, same thing. Uh, just put in the number you want. So somebody can the actually put in the variable. That it's very nice. Uh, and then I just use shape. But I did see some uh, pretty innovative things looking at column size, and like uh, you can technically do length columns. Uh, length of the index and then just selecting a group by that was I, most people got that pretty easy you just select it the ones you want and then group by disorder and then median Aggregate. This was a subtle way of telling you guys to use aggregate. It's just a slightly simpler way to do it, but you can also use group by. Uh, to get the mean. So, unless anybody had like a very like interesting, provocative way that I have not considered, then I really would like to see that. Otherwise, we'll probably go to the second portion, which is just a slightly more intense version of what we just did. So to we're gonna download some data and this is just a way to download like data you find in on the internet. Uh, I'm using the VB matches because we did this I think maybe last year uh, for one of the tidy Tuesdays. And so this gets the data from online, saves it as a CSV file so that we can then load it uh, with read CSV. The thing with read CSV and the thing with pandas is there is no read uh, table or read uh, delimited. If you want to read as like something other than a CSV, you just need to put the separate bit here. Uh, and then you can look at the names. We can look at the top five. Tell. Look at it, it's a handful. And then we, we mentioned this. This if if you don't if you forget your colon, this is not going to work. Remember the colon. Then I tried some very interesting things that can be done in R and then attempted to replicate it. I don't suggest doing this, but it was an interesting uh, phenomenon. So, this row number where you're looking at the index and just adding one so that it matched. The big thing here is that you're just adding a new column, match ID. And you're using the same thing, except you're just renaming it something else. And then if you want to count, uh, you do a values count, and you select the rows you want to count. By default, sort is true. Uh, so like, if you want to put this sort true here, I got the same thing down here bias count, and then you just put in sort is true. But th this is the default. When you don't want to do sort, 
which is quite fast. Uh, one of my, the things that really, really, really prefer in Python than R is the ability to do some very impressive regress, regression, regret. So with re, uh, this is just another fancy way of importing from the library and then you import the sub, which is the, say if you just import re. Read match is going to be the same thing as if you were just to do match. Obviously, that's not going to work because I'm not doing any matching, but you, you get the idea. Tempted to do this big block of, of okay. And what I end up doing is you put the make a dictionary name for your renaming. Then you can rename with the dictionary, melt it using this regress statement here to do a column match. And then string splitting and string to upper. I don't think it worked 100%, but I thought it was an interesting attempt to doing a bunch of things in uh, a couple of lines of code. Uh, the, the MBA one, I think is a little bit, is what we're gonna to finish this off with. So it's the same kind of stuff where you're gonna look at the MBA stuff. Uh, you can still use type and then it tells you exactly what it is. Uh, you can look at the length, shape, do all this stuff. The info is a more detailed version of like a, of a description where it gives you the column, the index for that column, what the size kind of what it is, and then the d data type here as well. And then the memory usage. And then we can describe it as previous. I just tilted it because it looked better this way. You don't. And then you can also use, you can tell it to use specific things. And here we're looking at MP objects. So instead it uses count unique top and frequency instead of count mean standard. Slightly different things to consider. So again, we're using this MBA instead of the fake simulated gene expression. Say you wanted to know uh, what year, we wanted to find the spurs uh, and years more than 2010, you can subset for that. Uh, or you can do some interesting things like say, hey, how many games did the Spurs win and lose? So what's their record and what per year, what was the results? And you could just count it up. I think size might also work. So size count interchangeable for this particular bit. And then finally say we want to save this information because we're a big Spurs fan. I'm not going to lie. I don't even know which city the Spurs is in. I'm going to say in Texas, Antonio, maybe. Yeah, it's, Antonio. it's a hard guess. It's a hard guess. <laughs> but say you did really enjoy the Spurs and you wanted to keep all that information. You To save things, you just add to CSV. So that's going to be your right file. And then here I'm saving it as a tab delimited. And so you just input the separation. And then by default, the index is true and header is true. There is no index because I reset the index. Uh, so 
that's how you can say it. Yes, this is your your break. So if you want to go to the next line, it tells the it's kind of like a pipe. Um, it's kind of like the break and bash. Uh, of, if you don't have it here, it's like the plus or whatever you want to call it. I can't remember what you have in, in R. Yes, the, it's like a pipe in R. Uh, and so you can go to the next line. Um, can you put those breaks anywhere? Uh, Could I put a break after, you know, let's say here, before the square bracket? I don't know why you would. Just like if I wanted to keep everything like 80 characters long type of thing. Yeah, I don't know, maybe. I've never tried to be real. Uh, so let's try it. This is what it looks like fire. And then let's decide we want to do a break. The answer is no. You can't, I know for a fact that you can't put the break on the opposite side of this dot. This also errors. Oh, no, it didn't. Normally it errors for me. So it doesn't go everywhere. Um, sorry, I just wanted to make a quick comment. Um, I think the backslash is like an escape character, escape character for new lines. So it's like saying if you uh, if you enter a new line afterward, it ignores it because that's important in Python. So like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So that it can't go make, anywhere. Yeah, it's like it doesn't go everywhere. And I know if you start putting it near these commas, then you're gonna screw up the screw up the syntax, but these uh, quotes. But yeah, I, I think that's probably true. Mm -hmm. I have a hard time remembering which one is the forward slash and which is the backslash. And I actually just put this by root, but that sounds about right. Mm -hmm. I had some more interesting things where it's pretty much the same thing, except now you're using the NDA stuff. Uh, where you, you instead of getting the spurs, you can look at the team ID, uh, franchise, um, what does this code doing? Some of the stuff I, I didn't talk about, which we probably would need more time to do, is like how to clean data, because they've got removing duplicates, removing NAs, filling stuff, sorting values, mapping, and then visualizing with pandas. It does visualize. I found out this year that I could visualize with pandas. I was blowing my mind. Uh, and then series, but and probably stuff I haven't considered in pandas. But uh, I feel like it's a decent start to understanding pandas. And we can probably uh, hit some of these cleaning and the concatenation stuff in some next sessions. So. That's all I got because we really don't have time to go to the, the do the next breakout. Pretty much the same time.